I have a dream that somewhere out there is a bike, the perfect motorcycle, the motorcycle you can do everything on. The, you, the one bike does it all motorcycle. A bike you can go touring on, a bike you can do fast road riding on, you can do comfortable road riding on, you can do track days on. Well, last year I tried the Pikes Peak Multistrada, the Ducati. You know, a, a, a fantastic motorcycle, but it wasn't quite sporty enough or engaging enough for my liking. End of last year, when I saw BMW announce some teasers about this machine, the M1000XR, I started to get excited once more. Could this be my dream do-it-all motorcycle, an all-in-one motorcycle to do everything? Well, I've had it for the last two weeks, I've been enjoying myself, and it's time for me to give you my views on this machine. So uh, if you're interested in the M1000XR, and come on, you bloody should be, then get yourself a cup of tea and chop see Look at that machine. Look at that machine. I This is the competition version. I should point that out. This is the competition version. So it looks much, much nicer than the standard version. The standard version is in white and it's okay. But the black, the carbon, this red, red, blue and light blue sort of color scheme, I just think looks really, really cool. I know some people were like, oh, it's a, it's a bit leery. It's a bit outlandish, but it's an M bike, and what I like about it is there's no disguising the fact it's an M bike. You know, even like the car people, when they see you in traffic on this with the M, people know this is something a little bit special, a little bit naughty, and uh, I really like that. And I, I, I know it's sort of a funny looking bike. You couldn't call it pretty, you know, the sort of the front and. But I think it's sort of mean looking, you know, it's very big in the middle, isn't it? It looks quite short, you know, you've got small wheels and tall suspension, but I, just just like a sort of super, I think it looks great. I really, really like the styling of this bike. I know it's not probably everyone's taste, but I like it. I like it a lot. I'm actually quite fortunate because last week I borrowed the M1000R and I've also ridden, as I said, the Ducati Multistrada Pikes Peak last year. So, you know, I've tried the single R version so I can sort of tell you how this feels to the single R and I can tell you also how this feels to the Pikes Peak. So, you know, this, what, what really impresses with this bike, it's like the single R, you know, it's just, it's so, Sporty. Now, after the sort of bit of a disappointment with the Pike Speak, and don't get me wrong, it was a lovely, lovely motorcycle, but I think it lacked, when you had the suspension as hard as possible, you had no real feedback or connection from the road still. And also, the Pike's Peak, the Multistrada, weighs 250 kilos. This weighs 223 kilos. So this is, what, 25 kilos lighter nearly and I think that really makes a difference when you're throwing a bike right over onto the side of the tyre an extra 25 kilos and suspension which gives you decent feedback sort of makes all the difference in your confidence levels and with all the M bikes the brakes are absolutely incredible so you get also extra confidence because the brakes are amazing the brakes on this feel as progressive and as powerful as the brakes on the single R. Even though this is another 25 or 23 kilos heavier than the single R, the brake performance is still as good. It's sort of really quite amazing. And there's so much agility here. The way you can just dance it left and right through the twisties. And what really makes this bike stand out above the Multistrada is even though this has got long sort of travel suspension you're still getting feedback from the road now the m1000r the suspension is is very hard now even in the softest setting it's very hard 
On this bike, it is also hard, but it's not quite as hard as the M1000R. And I've got it in race pro mode, which is suspension sort of in the sportier. Not fully hard, but sort of semi, semi. It's got a bit of a semi on, but if you go to the road mode, it will soften up. Not massively. I mean, you can see, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting everything through from the road. But you have to do that to get the feedback and the confidence to push this bike through the corners. And unlike the Multistrada, I've got full confidence in this machine to push it around the corners. And, you know, it's just... I, I was I said at the beginning I was looking for a do-it-all motorcycle. And I really believe this is a do-it-all motorcycle. I believe I can do a track day on this and be fast. So let's start at the beginning. So let's start with the sort of the riding position. What's the riding position like on this bike? Well, the riding position is one of the slight criticisms I've got with this machine. If you're a larger rider, I'm 6'2", 20 stone, as everybody knows by now, but you're quite locked in in the seat. The old XR, you were very locked in. It had like a sculpted seat and you were completely locked in. This is slightly less locked in than the old bike but there's still, there's not much room back and forward. So you've got no room if you're, if you're a big fatty like me to actually move back and forward in the seat. So you are locked in. The good news is the seat is nice and wide and it's sort of curved and, and, and profiled to your ass a little bit. So, I mean, I've, I've, I've done like two hour stints on this bike and I have not been uncomfortable. So I actually think there's more comfort on this than you might think when you first sit on it, when you realize you're sort of locked in a little bit. But yeah, so you're a little bit locked into the seat. Yeah, my ankles are sort of in between my hips and my knees. So it's sort of a, a moderate sort of riding position, I suppose. The, the pegs are not that low. So your you, pegs are like a, a little bit of an angle, but more comfortable than they are. And the bars are really wide, sort of quite high. You're sat right upright. There's no, you don't feel like you've got weight over the front. You're sat quite upright. You know, there's, I'd say there's not a massive amount of weight over the front, but you still do manage to get a lot of good feeling from the front tyre. Wet patch, got to watch out for those. There is a bit of fork dive when you go hard on the brakes. There is a bit of fork dive. There is some manual preload. I could wind in to the forks if I want, because it does, it does dive a little bit, but it's so, the brakes are so nice. You've got so much feel when it dives you can feel what the front tire is doing sort of within the corner as you're braking that it's not too much of a problem and i can probably dial a bit of extra preload in anyway but the issue with that is you know the suspension is quite firm so if i dialed extra preload in it's probably going to make it even firmer so i could probably live with what the front end is like <laughs> Compared to the M1000R, it doesn't have quite the same sort of punch. If you saw our Super Duke versus M1000R comparison I did with Greg, I put a link at the top there, the roll-ons on the M was really impressive against the Super Duke. When you jump on this, it hasn't got quite the same amount of punch at the bottom end. Now I've checked the gearing, the gearing is exactly the same on the XR as it is to the M single R, so it's not the gearing. I think it's just that extra 25 kilos. It's just sort of hampering and slowing its acceleration down a little bit, but it's definitely not as lively as the M1000R. And it doesn't pick the front up like the M1000R does when you sort of just open the throttle. Even though I've got it in race pro mode and I've got the one-to-one the -one throttle mapping on this, it's not quite got that power to lift the front as you go up through the gears. Of course, once you go up and hit the upper rev ranges, it does pick the front up on the power, but it just, you know, the bike's, I think, a bit too heavy to pick it up on the throttle like it does on the M. But what is really impressive with this and why I think it sort of does it, it's a good do everything bike is it's got comfort. Yeah, the suspension's a bit sporty, but if I go into the road mode, everything is softened up a little bit there we go road everything is softened up a little bit the throttle response is softened up and the suspension is also softened up so it becomes more comfortable if i hit these potholes you know it's not too bad i'm not getting too jarred so there's a good there's a good amount of difference between you know, hard and soft i mean the soft is like the multistrada pike's peak is when it's on hard so when the Multistrada Pikes Big is hard, it's equivalent to the soft suspension on this bike. 
So that's the difference, you know, and when you go super hard on this, it is literally super hard. So if you're going on track, you would have loads of support, loads of feel from the road. But that, that is great. So this bike does go comfortable enough. The screen is small, of course. You can adjust it and bring it up a little bit. But I, because I'm 6'2", I actually quite like a low screen. Because if you have too much screen, you just get all the air hitting your helmet and you get buffeting. So I actually prefer a little screen. And if I was going to spend hours and hours on a motorway, like doing a big tour or a big distance, I'd just swap that for a taller touring screen, a really big one. So that, that's what I do. So I'm quite happy with that stubby little screen. I mean, that puts the air, sort of keeps the air off your belly, but you've got sort of clean air hitting your helmet. All clean air. I prefer clean hair. Clean hair? I'm going to hair. I prefer clean air than less dirty air, but turbulent air hitting the helmet. So I actually quite like that, that small screen like that. So here she is up close and personal the M1000XR. Looking at the styling of it, I actually think it looks really good. And the biggest problem for me with this bike is it's 27,000 pounds in this competition edition. And the standard version is 23,000 pounds and some change. Well, I think it's about 23,300, but the, the standard one's in white. And if I were to get one of these, I, I love the look of this in the black. I don't think it looks nowhere near as mean and as sporty in the white. So if I was going to get one, I'd have to get the black, which means I'd have to spend £27,500, and I just cannot justify £27,500. Gorgeous as this thing is. So let's have a quick look around it. So up front, we have those absolutely delicious M brakes. These brakes are the best brakes I have ever tried. I mean, they may not be Brembo, they may only be, I think they're made by Nissan, but I don't know what BMW, I don't know what secret source BMW are doing. It, maybe it's the pad, I don't know what they're doing with these brakes, but they're absolutely incredible. This being the competition edition, you get the carbon fiber wheels, carbon fiber mudguard, carbon fiber side panels. I mean, it's, it's carbon all over this thing. One thing I would have liked to have seen on this bike to finish out that sort of blacked out look is to have diamond coated fork stanchions. These are Marzocchi forks. Marzocchi do, on the Ducatis of my old 1100S, they used to have diamond coated. Imagine these all black tubes with a black stanchion there as well. It looked really mean. So that's a little bit of a letdown that there's no diamond coated black stanchion there. And on the M, you of course get the winglets as well. So this has got winglets on the side of the bike. Now these are quite subtle, so I quite like these because they're not too in your face, they're quite subtle winglets. So actually I've got quite a lot of time from the winglets on the, uh, on the MXR. With the competition package you get nice little carbon pieces like around the, the start ignition button here you've got carbon. You've got carbon on the inside of the cowl as well which looks nice with a little M logo. Woo! Worth five grand just for that. On the competition you also get these delicious billet editions of the, the rear sets and these are slightly different to the ones on the M1000R. You've got little rubber pieces on these so these are actually a bit even nicer I think than the ones on the R. Remote preload adjuster, let's just put that to fatty spec. You get the Acra can as well which actually has a nice little pop, sounds pretty decent and of course you've got the big old exhaust underneath. I guess the biggest sort of disappointment with this bike is probably the rear end where you can't mount any hard luggage. There's no hard luggage available for this bike. And I think the reason for that is it's got like 180 mile an hour top speed. I think MCN tested this up to 175 mile an hour at, uh, on a runway. So it's, it's a true 170 mile an hour motorcycle, 175 mile an hour motorcycle. And if they were to put the capacity to have hard luggage on it, then they'd have to limit the top speed because of stability. So they took the decision to make it incredibly fast and have sort of soft luggage options only because otherwise they would have to have limited the top speed to 140 or something like that. And it's an M bike, you can't have it limited to 140. So the, the sort of the worst thing about this or the biggest flaw, if we're talking about flaws, is there's no hard luggage option, which is a bit of a shame, but you can still get soft luggage, you can still get rear bags on it. But yeah, I agree, it's a little bit of a shame. There's no hard luggage. And I don't really need to do 175 if I'm honest. On the rear, I also really like these little vents 
sort of the rear cow and these little vents through here. When you're following the bike, you can see these little vents out the back and I think that looks really, really mean as well. You've also got a big old gaper. Not only is there a gaper at the back, there's also a gaper at the front. Not forgetting, of course, the delicious M billet levers as well. Cubby hole here where you can keep your key in. You, you have to have a very small phone for it to fit in there, but it's, it's good for keeping like your, your passport in, I guess, or like your toll tickets, that, that sort of stuff you need handy when you're sort of touring. Or you can keep the key in there to make it really easy to pinch. The rear seat is quite ample. So I think the pillion comfort on this would be actually rather nice. And you've got the M, M stitching and I think the rear seat looks really nice and I haven't tested it. I don't really fancy it, but a quite ample looking nice pillion seat and, and a crab rail. So there we go. There's the walk around of the M1000 XR competition. What a beauty. Another sort of straight four superpower and why this makes a good sort of touring bike is when you are going through town, you load the engine up and they're just so nice. Uh, you know, you can just really load a straight four up and bring the revs down to like two and a half thousand revs and it'll quite happily just pull along like that. And that's another reason why this bike makes it, you know, an excellent tourer. You know, when you don't want to go mad, you can just sit back and relax and it's really quite pleasant just to poot along with it in a higher gear. And as soon as you, you want to unleash it a bit, you knock it down a few. There's a bit of wheel spin there. And, uh, <laughs> unleash it. And this is in road mode. So that's a little bit softer. So if I want to get a, a wriggle on, I go back to my, you can go dynamic mode, it's pretty good, but I've actually configured Race Pro 1 with no wheelie control so you can have a little bit of wheelie fun livens it up a little bit and also you've got that that moderate suspension now not super hard but i've got it moderate and you can also then adjust your traction control on the dct buttons up and down I have it on three i have it on four because we've got the odd little, little wet patch today Woo! the bike's power is also reduced slightly compared to the uh, single R version. This is 201 horsepower, not 210. So they thought, hang on a minute, it is, it is a, a touring bike. We better reduce the power a little bit. Let's just knock nine horsepower off it. <laughs> so that's what BMW has done. Oh, but it's still absolutely crazy. It's still absolutely crazy. It's got a brilliant little overrun on the uh, from the exhaust as well overrun noise and the brakes are so i mean i can't i can't tell you how nice this is to push through the corners and how lovely it is to be in a really comfortable riding position and still have fantastic feel and you know everything else from the bike i know ducati have now released the rs version of the multistrada which has the full Panigale engine in it. I mean, the suspension could have been tweaked on that, but it's still going to be a 250 kilo motorcycle. That's the problem. So it's always going to be a heavy bike. And I'm never going to get to ride one of those because the Ducati UK don't have one. And I think they're also limited numbers as well. So I'm never going to get to ride one. So I'm never going to know if this is the more sporty bike out of the two. I just have a feeling it will be because of the weight difference. Oh, we've got a slightly wet hill climb. That is a shame. That is a shame. One thing you notice when you're, when you're throwing it round is you can get out the seat. The seat is sort of sculpted so you can sort of get your knee out. So if you're on track, you can, yeah, you can hang off it. You can get your knee down, which is nice that you, that you, that you can still do that. Woo! <laughs> That's brakes. Those brakes are so good. Quick shifter blipper is incredible as well. You know, it's, it's that BMW system on the straight four engine. It's so smooth. It's so incredible. You know, it's, it's almost like electric the way it changes gear. So, so nice. Okay, well, I suppose we better talk a little bit about some niggles, haven't we? <laughs> I think I've been uh, gushing about this bike enough. So what, what are the bad things of this bike? Well, as I mentioned, you are a little bit locked in. You, know, you can stand up to take some weight off your, off your ass. And actually, it's not bad if you stand up. I can straighten my legs completely and still reach the bars. The bars are quite high. 
So if you do want to have a little stretch, you can stand up, which is nice. That The pegs aren't too high to stop you doing that, and that, that's important. Also, there is a few little vibes through the bars. Now, I, I don't find this too much of a problem, because I, you know, I keep quite a light touch on the handlebars. If you're one of those people who really grips the handlebars, then you're going you're gonna to feel it in your hands. But if you're light on the bars, light touch, it's not a problem. You can notice at sort of 70 miles now on the motorway, you can't really see much in these mirrors because they're vibing, you know. And again, that comes down to that slight vibration through the bars. Other bad points, of course, is the, the hard luggage. You can't, there's no hard luggage options for this bike. As I mentioned on the walk around, that's just a limit. You know, otherwise I'd have to set a limit on the top speed. They didn't want to do that. They wanted a true 175 mile an hour monster. But you can get soft panniers, of course, to throw over the back of it. But it's not the end of the world, in my opinion. Okay, I'm going to put it into dynamic mode. So I've got a little bit of wheelie control and we'll do a little bit of a launch. That's a fast bike. <laughs> that is a fast machine. It doesn't feel quite as fast as the M1000R because it is nine horsepower down and 23 kilos up so it doesn't feel quite as mental as the m1000r but it is still mentally fast and that was with the dynamic mode so i had some wheelie control on then if you have the wheelie control off it will lift the front you know it's uh yeah it, <laughs> it is mentally fast to go that fast on a touring machine it is just mind-blowing and the thing with this bike not only does it go ridiculously fast in a straight line it also goes around corners and that, that is so impressive so 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 impressive and it goes around corners with confidence you're not just putting faith in the tires oh, it'll be all right i've got faith in the tires no it's that it's actually giving you feel that you can feel what the tires are doing and uh, it is it's very impressive it's a £27,000 motorcycle with this competition. It's 23500 without you know, the competition pack. That's, that's only £5,000 more expensive than the standard TE XR. So the XR, once you've got the electronic suspension, it's five grand more expensive than the standard XR, which I just find a little bit too spicy. I mean, the M1000R is actually cheaper than a fully specced S1000R. And so you can almost, you can argue that it's actually good value, that there's the sort of the, the, the basic M1000R with the, because you've got forged wheels. Yes, you get forged wheels on the XR, but I just think five grand is a little bit too much money over the base XR. I, I don't think I could bring myself to spend 23,000 pound. And also with, with the MX, with the M bikes, yeah, I mean, the suspension's amazing. The brakes are incredible. But you know they're BMW's own own equipment. They're not they're not paying premium prices for Brembo for Olins. So that makes that twenty seven thousand pound and the twenty three and a half thousand pound even more fruity, in my opinion. I think there's quite a lot of margin for BMW in this MXR, more so than what I think is in the M thousand R, because they've not have put in those premium equipment on it that they're obviously having to buy in. At a huge cost you know when these companies are buying in olin suspension buying in brembo calipers i would imagine they're a lot more those would be a lot more expensive when they're buying in marzocchi forks and nissan calipers you know but they're charging premium prices the blipper is just seamless everything just works seamlessly on this bike the electronics are brilliant the interface is brilliant everything you know everything is perfect you know i guess you could say and and i sort of would would agree it's a little bit sterile perhaps you know it lacks a little bit of that je ne sais quoi <laughs> that you might get you know the power plant on the the multistrada that v4 you know it's it's a more you know, it's a more engaging engine. So you, you, you could argue the engine is a little bit uninspiring, and, and I would agree. 
It is a little bit uninspiring. It is a little bit clinical, but that doesn't take anything away from it being an incredible motorcycle. And it's definitely a motorcycle I could live with, I could own if I had, but I'd want this competition version and then you're, you're, you're 27 and a half thousand pounds. And then you're into the, you know, a bike of that price. Yeah, it's a bike I can do everything on. It's a bike I can do track. Now, do I want to take a 27,000 pound motorcycle on track? No, I don't. So it's almost too expensive to do all of the things you want to do on it. So yeah, it can do everything, but would you really want to do it? So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed that little insight into the M1000XR. As you can tell, I bloody love this. It's everything I hoped it would be. When you sort of build a bike up in your mind and then you ride it and it's a little bit lacking, it's really disappointing. And I think that's what happened with me at the Pike Speak. I'd built up in my mind that it was going to be exceptional and it was exceptional but it, it just it just lacked a bit of something for me it didn't perform as well as i thought it would whereas this you know i built it up in my mind it was going to be something really special and it is everything i thought it would be and it's brilliant that i've just handed back the keys to the m1000r so i can compare it directly in my mind to that bike and it's not too far away from the performance that machine offers so it is incredible you know if it was twenty-three and a half thousand pounds for this version with all the carbon, well, even if it even just black with these stickers on, I could be really tempted. But twenty-seven and a half thousand pounds—it's just too much money for me, I'm afraid. But if you've got that money, then believe you me, this is an incredible bike. So if you've enjoyed this little review, please consider subscribing if you're not already. Please give us a like, share, all that jazz. It makes a massive difference to the YouTube gods if you could do that. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.